welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's largest platform for entrepreneurs. Anything and everything that matters to you, well, we cover it here on the show. I'm Sunanda Jai Seelan. On the show tonight, we're bringing you a special series of conversations that we call Dubai Eye, focusing on innovation and entrepreneurship coming out of the Dubai UAE market. We bring you today's biggest entrepreneurs and talk about life in Dubai and the UAE region and also what the entrepreneurs have to say looking ahead and their expansion plans. All of that encapsulated in this series of special conversations that we're doing on this edition of Leaders of Tomorrow. Also on the LOT Hot Seat tonight, which is a segment where we feature India's hottest entrepreneurs. We are in conversation with Lead School. What are they doing? What is the future for this industry and this company looking like? All of that in just a moment in that special conversation. First up tonight, we're bringing you our Dubai Eye series that brings you the most innovative entrepreneurs from the Dubai UAE market and region. And all of this season, we've been doing just that here on the Leaders of Tomorrow Season 9. Tonight, we're continuing to bring you conversations from Jitex in Dubai. And uh, we have been joined by our presenter in Dubai, Jill, who has with her a company that's doing something very exciting when it comes to the entire digital ecosystem. Digital Dubai, she's in conversation with Jill. Uh, over to you. You know, just set the context for our viewers here in India about what the business does, uh, also about uh, Jitex. And uh, of course, go ahead, take it away as far as the interview is concerned. Thank you, Sananda. Well, how many governments actually have a stated aim to make theirs the happiest city on earth for both residents and citizens? Well, Dubai has, and Digital Dubai is the government organization that's been charged with making that happen. Sure. Through collaborative and agile transformation of the city to a smart city. His Excellency Hamid Al Mansouri, Director General of Digital Dubai, has joined us here at GTEX to talk about their ambitions, their achievements, and the potential partnerships. Your Excellency, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. You were previously Smart Dubai. Why did you rebrand as Digital Dubai? First, I would like to thank you for having me in this uh, interview. Uh, Dubai always changed. We started the e-government since 2000. Then we moved to the M-government, to Smart Government, to Smart City, and today to Digital Governments. Always the government and the, the e-government focus in providing service and enhancing the government services. Today our role is different. We are focusing more about the journey, about the private sector, and how to engage the government with the private sector to create the best uh, technical digital lifestyle for the city. So today if you consider Dubai as a city, we need to create a digital city in the cloud where you can find all the uh, services available in very easy way. So the government will be invisible in the end. What technologies and innovations are you most excited about seeing at GTEx this year? See, GTEx I think is proving uh, different things. So always uh, I respect GTEx because since 2000, this is the first international exhibition hosting all people during the COVID 19. Today we see a lot of people joining here JITEX, exploring their tool and their digital things. I think the government need to work closely with the private sector. It is a big chance also to see what they are doing, seeing and learn from other countries' experience. It is a privilege for us also 
to see different nationality, different background, and we need also to, le to, to learn and to show them also Dubai case. It is a good chance for us also to promote for, for Dubai what we are doing and what we are willing to do. You will see a lot of things in, the, in Dubai uh, stand, and I think it is good also to be share and learn about people, what, what they are thinking about ourselves and how to enhance our services in general. Which technologies are seeing the most adoption and traction in Dubai at the moment? And which ones do you think will really take off in the future? See, uh, Dubai is having all technology needed now. We have different nationality, different ages, different generation, different solution and applications. So you can see the blockchain, AI needed in something, data, data, data manipulation needed in something else, the normal uh, application and apps needed, uh, needed. You will see something like uh, lens, lens uh, uh, where the lens will play main role in your transaction. So when you click, that means you can see something. So you, your lens will be like your screen in the future. People talking about the brain net, how your brain will interact with you in order also to help you to, to gain and to see the, 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 the services and to enhance about the services. So we, we will see something different. We can see uh, uh, technology now, maybe we see it like, we call it like emerging technology, not mature enough, but it will be mature in the end. Maybe the good thing to show, to, to see here, the facial recognition. The facial recognition, when they started, it was not accurate as today. Today, maybe uh, you will access your credit card, you will access your information in, the, in your mobile, only using your facial recognition. So the technology will be more mature. Technology will be, will be uh, more uh, dependent on, and things will be changed. And uh, this is only to help the, the human to be more relaxed and enjoying their life for something else. What are the biggest challenges and the biggest opportunities in technology right now, do you feel? So uh, as long as uh, there is a creativity, you can uh, see all these kind of challenges and create your own startup. Uh, you will, in, in uh, seeing the challenge, always will create uh, disruption uh, solution. We saw the challenge of the like, travel agency where uh, Booking.com came. We saw the challenge of taxi where Uber came. So always there is a, a potential for the new generation, for entrepreneur, and for the solution to come because always we see something sometimes it is which is we, we think it is it is normal but there is another generation who's more smarter than us seeing see it, see it as opportunity and creating solution for it what advantages does dubai offer to indian companies and startups to attract them to come to the emirate see uh, if you see the indian community i think they are uh, the main resident of dubai they are the highest number in the city. Uh, Dubai, they create uh, many startup and entrepreneur uh, area in Dubai. So you can see something in Dubai future. You can see Dubai in, in Dubai, Dubai commercial. Uh, and you can see something in Dubai internet city, uh, Silicon Oasis. So Dubai is welcoming all nationalities, special Indian nationality to experience the, the Indian businesses. We are in the hub of the world. We have one of the best airports and best airlines worldwide. You can reach Africa in very easy way. You can reach Europe in very easy way. And this is uh, it's considered like a big community here. You can find everything here from schooling, from uh, food, from uh, community, so we welcome all. And I think Dubai, it is the right destination for any digital uh, company to grow. Thank you very much for your time, Your Excellency. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it's these innovations that will continue to drive Dubai to be not only perhaps the happiest city on earth, but also the most technologically advanced for both those who live and work here. Now it's back to the studio. Jill? Thanks so much for that. Uh, there are a host of events that are taking place in Dubai. There was JITEX, so we've also been bringing you all of the exclusive coverage from around Expo 2020 in Dubai. Uh, there are a host of other events that are going to be coming up, some of the largest anywhere in the world. 
And be sure to tune into the Leaders of Tomorrow for all of the action. We're bringing you some of the biggest interviews and voices out of all the action taking place there in the Dubai UA region. All right, time for a quick break. When we come back, what's the hottest here in India? And what's the latest here in India? That is a conversation with Lead School, uh, who is joining us on the Leaders of Tomorrow Hot Seat, coming up in just a moment. Welcome back. You're with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow Weekend Edition. Our second conversation tonight and in the hot seat tonight is Sumit Mehta of Lead School. Sumit, uh, good having you here on the show with us tonight. Uh, let's, you know, start by talking about the education sector in the space here in India and how you as a company are really reshaping what's going on. School education, uh, schools must be the only category in India which are yet to be disrupted by innovation. And LEAD is uh, reimagining how schools should be run uh, from first principles because traditionally schools have created a system of lecture based rote learning where students basically are taught something they are tested and then uh, the report is given but no remediation is given and that's what we call linear learning okay and because of which students uh, compound gaps and what lead is doing is ensuring that schools become centers of excellence where every child can learn by fundamentally transforming uh, school operations curriculum pedagogy and outcomes through school edtech you know, EdTech has been seeing a lot of traction of late. There's a lot of action that's really taking place. So my question to you is, how is what is happening in the EdTech space, and what you are doing really in the EdTech space, different from what others are doing? You know, help our viewers really understand your USP. Sure. A lot of uh, EdTech that we hear about in popular media is what I call consumer EdTech, and they focus on going directly to the student. Uh, but they really are serving the supplemental education need in the market. And how school edtech is different is it focuses on core schooling, which is where a child spends six hours of the day. And our belief is that if we can transform those six hours of schooling for a child, then they might not even need tuitions. So how leads offering is different is that a we work via schools by transforming schooling. And within a school, we offer what we call an integrated system, which ensures that all stakeholders in the school, whether it is the teacher, student, parent, principal, or school owner, they're all on this system and their workflows are transformed so that the eventual result is uh, better learning outcomes for students. So you are a school edtech player, of course. Uh, what is your vision as far as school edtech in the country are concerned? So I think my dream is that every child should have access to a great school irrespective of where they are born and who they are born to. And this is uh, this will require a lot of work because currently in India, good schooling or good education it is determined by an accident of birth. So if you're born in a rich family in a metro, you get access to a good school. But if you're born in a small town or to a low income family, the quality of learning precipitously drops. Okay. And Leeds vision is that if we can create a network of thousands of schools uh, available to every child uh, so that, you know, every child has the opportunity to achieve their true potential through great schooling, then I think we will give India the right input uh, to really emerge as a, as a developed nation. Hashtag tech with purpose. Could you talk to us a little more on that and you know what uh, really uh, you and your organization and uh, you know your other leaders are really doing uh, around that? 
See, in education, if there is one thing that I have learned, it is that uh, Saraswati comes before Lakshmi. Uh, and by Saraswati, I mean learning outcomes. And by Lakshmi, I mean commercial success. And what I've learned is that if you are able to deliver learning outcomes, uh, then of course, commercial success will follow. So what tech with purpose means is that, you know, we move away uh, from the current focus on adoption and engagement, which a lot of consumer ed tech companies focus on. Sure. But we don't stop only at adoption and engagement. We actually deliver, we use technology's power to deliver learning outcomes. And if technology can help students achieve learning outcomes, that is what is tech with purpose. Because in education, the path to profit goes through purpose. And that's why tech with purpose is a really important mantra for us. Why is it better for students to learn through lead empowered schools? What could you tell us? See, I think the quality of uh, education in schools in India is uh, is not up to the mark. There are only about 10, 12 thousands out of the 1.5 million schools who are delivering good education. So for a child to really achieve their true potential and have a bright future, they need access to a, a good school. In a lead powered school, you get what we call the five signs of a good school. You know, you get visible learning outcomes. So a parent can see visibly that their child is learning. Uh, the child is able to learn through new innovative international standard methods. Every teacher is empowered through technology and curriculum. The student is not only able to learn in school, but also continue their learning at home. And fifth, they are able to participate in a national network of schools. So opportunities which are otherwise not available in their local area are now available things like lead national championships, lead national talent search examination. So these five things if a student gets in their school, then they're truly getting access to good quality education. And that's why a lead powered school is important for students. All right, um, Sumit, you know, tell us what the future is looking like, what plans you have, anything you can share with us? Lead has fundamentally changed how schools buy uh, school solutions. So earlier, a lot of uh, school solution providers were offering what we call piecemeal solutions. It could be a teacher training program. It could be a curriculum company. It could be a book publisher. It could be a smart class provider. What LEAD has done is it has brought in an integrated system where if a school adopts LEAD, they don't need anything else. And that has actually led us uh, to get very, very high adoption. So we have grown 3x uh, to 4x over the last three, four years from only five schools, we are now working with over 2,700 schools. And every month we are adding 300 schools to our partnership network. And our, our vision is that if we continue this breakneck pace, we will very soon over the next two, three years be providing excellent learning to more than 25 million students across 60,000 schools. What's your why and why growth looking like, especially in the past two years when things have been the most difficult for most industries? Uh, you know, what's your growth been like? Yeah, I think COVID was a seminal moment in education. Uh, schools actually realized that without the use of integrated systems like LEED, they were sitting ducks for any disruption. So last year, uh, when COVID hit, a lot of schools building stopped. Uh, but what we realize is with technology, even if the building is locked down, the school can continue. And we were able to take all our schools online. And that meant that all our schools were able to provide seamless learning to their students. They were able to continue. We were able to retain them. And not only that, we were able to add uh, schools. And like I said, we grew 3x last year. And now as uh, schools are reopening across the country. We are seeing a further momentum shift, momentum shift in in school adoption. Okay. Uh, and this year we are adding schools at a rate which is about four times higher than what we were doing last year. When you're talking about uh, just how much traction the edtech space has seen, we have to talk about the fact that the edtech industry in India and the space in India and the sector has given rise to so many unicorns. What is the future as far as funding for edtech companies and players in the country looking like? A lot of uh, funding is flowing into edtech, uh, specifically uh, consumer edtech. And while that is great, I think uh, school edtech, in fact, is three to four times bigger than uh, consumer edtech because while consumer edtech is discretionary, it is supplemental. School edtech is core. Every child goes to a school. India has 260 million school going children. 
uh, you know, they, if they were a country, they'll be the fifth largest country in the world. And uh, fundamentally, for a parent in India, after food, shelter, clothing, the next thing that they spend on, if they have any discretionary income, is is schooling. Sure. So we need disruptive models uh, like the one Lead has developed, and we need to ensure that you know these models grow and transform school education at scale because. Uh, if such a large market is is transformed at scale, there is a massive commercial success to be achieved. All right, Sumit. Thank you so much for your time and all the very best. Sure. If you are an entrepreneur who just like Lead School is doing something highly innovative, uh, or if you know of someone who is, do write in to us. We love hearing from you, the entrepreneur. All of our details coming up on your screens as we speak. Do send us an email or you can tweet at us. Those details are there in our contact details. All right, tonight is a wrap then. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.